Hello, it's Jeff, and this is a video about interactive quizzes in Moodle. Um, interactive quizzes are quite complicated to set up. Uh, they take a fair bit of work, but they're also extremely powerful. Uh, so one thing, because they're so complicated to set up, and because if you don't set them up right, they won't behave properly, you also really need to test them out. And there are a few things about testing out quizzes in Moodle that are not entirely obvious. So I'm also going to show you a little bit about that. Interactive quizzes are great for formative assessment. The point of an interactive quiz is that it's set up so that when a student answers a question wrong, it will issue a hint to them and let them retry the question. And usually you have it set up so they then get a slight mark penalty on their retry. So the process starts just like making any other quiz in Moodle. So I'm going to turn editing on and give it a moment to refresh. And there we go. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to add it uh, down here where it's sort of out of the way and I can delete it later. And I'm going to add a quiz. So here I am on the usual page where you set up a quiz, and I'm going to give it a name and a little description. And I'm going to set it to open now. And I'm going to set it to close, I don't know, tomorrow or something. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to set it to only be doable once, but I'm going to make it adaptive or interactive. So I'm not going to worry too much about the layout. The main thing we need to worry about here is the question behavior. And the key thing is to set this to interactive with multiple tries. And leave redo within an attempt at no. Setting that to yes will make a rather strange quiz. So like I said, there are a few pitfalls and there are a few things which if you don't have set up right will cause the quiz to not behave properly. And the main thing is the review options. Now, the immediately after the attempt and later while the quiz is still open, that's something you would think about depending on your student's ability to communicate with other students who might still be writing the quiz. And I'm not going to worry about that right now. The main thing we need to worry about is what's visible during the attempt. And you could allow them to see their marks in an interactive quiz. I tend to think you don't. You want them to focus on the ideas, not the mark. The right answer being displayed confuses me, and I've tried it on and off, and it doesn't seem to make any difference, so that's probably something to do with the way I set my questions up. If you look at the hint, it says that you might want to consider turning it off and explaining in general feedback, and that is what I would recommend. So I would check that off. But the key thing is you want the feedback, otherwise this isn't going to work right. And you want whether it's correct. Everything else is going to be just like any other quiz. So however you prefer doing this with other quizzes, do it that way. So I'm now going to save and go to the quiz itself. So here I am on the main quiz page, and I am going to start by showing you questions I already have made up, because developing questions for interactive quizzes is time consuming. And if I made you sit through the whole process of me making up these questions, we would be here a long time. So you see I have three categories in my question bank that say, therefore, adaptive, which is, I tend to mix up adaptive and interactive. I actually mean interactive. So here we go. And I'm going to click into, say, this one to show you this question. So for the most part, this looks like any other multiple choice question. And the key thing is that you need to put feedback in. So 
This is an incorrect answer, and I've put some feedback in, which is a hint that would be useful to a quest, I hope, a useful hint to someone who chose this answer. Uh, the correct answer is actually this one. Now, the other thing is you need to make this work to have gone into this multiple tries part, and you need to have entered something into these hints. Okay, now in my case, I tend to prefer to give different hints depending on which wrong answer the student chose. And so I just make a very generic no see the hint beside the answer you chose for these hints down here. And I'm really only putting that here because I have to have something here, otherwise the question won't work. All of my hints are really up here with the individual answers. But I can certainly see that you might have a question where you don't actually need the specific feedback for the answers and you can just give a hint and another hint. So that's the key. Otherwise, this is just like any other multiple choice question and you can certainly build adaptive quizzes that aren't with multiple choice, but I will say I haven't tried and I'll bet it's a little complicated. So I'm just going to save that. And I'm going to go back out to the quiz. And I'm going to add in those questions that I've already got made. So I'm just going to add a random question and I'm going to add it from the one category that has interactive questions in it. And then I'm going to add another with one of these other ones. And one more. Okay, so there I've added in three questions, three random questions from different categories, and they're all built for interactive quizzes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test this quiz out and make sure it's working correctly. So I'm going to come out and I am going to switch my role to a student. I'm going to come back down to the quiz and click into it. And I'm going to click Attempt Quiz now. So I'm now in a preview of the quiz and it should work just the way it would if I was a student. Okay, and I'm going to deliberately choose a wrong answer here so that we see what it does. Okay, so notice it's saying check. Okay, so I'm going to click check. And note, here is the hint that I put in for that answer and here's that hint one, no, see the hint beside the answer you chose, right? So there is that hint being issued and it's now giving me the option to try it again, okay? Uh, okay, um, and I'll go on to the note that it's now saying that one is done and it's correct. And so I'm going to go to the next one, right? And again, I'm going to deliberately choose a wrong answer. Uh, say that one, right? And again, it's saying no, and here's a hint that I put in for this answer, and so I will try again. And I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna choose another incorrect one. Okay, and there we go, a note I've given a nice hint almost, right? Because in fact, the answer here is B or C. Uh, and one more, and I'll just I'll just get this one right so that we can cut to the chase and see how this turned out. Uh, what is the answer? That one. Okay, so I'm going to finish the attempt. I'm going to just as if I was a student, I will now note it's saying these are all correct. I'm going to submit all and finish. This is what a student would go through if they were writing this. And it now presents a review. Okay, and note, you can see this one where I got it wrong once, the mark is 0.8 out of one. And I'll show you exactly why that is in a moment. This one I actually answered incorrectly twice. And note, the mark is 0.6 out of one. And this one I answered right the first time and the mark is one out of one. 
So I'm going to show you why those marks were the way they were. So I'll finish the review and I'm going to go back to being me. Uh, and I'm going to find my way, say, into here. And the first question it asked me was this one. So I'm going to go in to the edit on it and I'll show you exactly why I got 0.8 out of one on it. Uh, and it's because here the penalty for each incorrect try was 20%. And note, I can adjust that. Right, I'm going to leave it at 20%, but whatever. So if you want to be kinder or not so kind, you can adjust that. Okay. The one last thing is that I have uh, tested it. And let's say that test of the quiz hadn't gone well, and I've now made some changes, and I want to test it again, right? So I I'm going to go back out, and I'm going to try and test it again, although I'll tell you right now it's not going to work, and then I'll show you why. Okay, so I'm going to go in to try and do it again, and it says, oh, look, I, I'm already finished. I can review it, but I don't have an opportunity to try it again because I've already done it. Okay, well, so let's fix that. So I'm going to return to being me, and what I'm going to do is I am going to go into results, and what I'm looking for is my attempt so I can delete it. Okay, now note it's not showing up, but that's because it is only showing attempts from enrolled users. Okay, and I'm not an enrolled user, I'm the instructor. Uh, it, it, this is the default because usually you're not really interested in seeing your own attempts, and so that's the default that it shows. Okay, to see mine, I'm going to have to go all users who have attempted the quiz, show report. And there's my attempt. Okay, so I'm going to click that check and delete it. Okay, and now that that is deleted, I could re-attempt the quiz. I hope you found that useful and not too, too overwhelming. These are complicated, but very, very powerful. It's uh, probably one of the more powerful ways you can make a quiz for formative uh, assessment. I'm just going to quickly review a few of the main things, right? In the settings for the quiz, you would need to have chosen interactive with multiple tries, and you need to make sure that the feedback and whether correct are selected in the review options during the attempt. And you have to have built the questions correctly for an interactive quiz. And so in particular, oops. So in particular, that means you should set feedback. Think about what the penalty is for incorrect tries and set hints, although if you're like me, you'll give very generic hints, and most of the hints will actually be in the specific feedback. 